Chapter four is going to look at energy. So in the previous chapters, we talked about uh, chemicals and how they're able to form bonds with each other. And we looked at ionic bonds and covalent bonds. And now we're going to look at within those chemical compounds, what type of energy do those compounds have and how can that energy be measured? So whenever we talk about energy, um, energy is really defined as the ability to do work. And these uh, chemicals, whenever we look at them, the atoms that make the molecules are always kind of moving around. So there's energy within the chemicals themselves. And we can refer to this energy in two different ways. It has uh, potential energy, which is the stored energy, and kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, so like the vibration of um, atoms in a solid or in a gas, the energy from the molecules moving around in the gas state. Um, and an important concept in kind of thinking about energy is this law of conservation of energy that states that the total energy in a system um, always stays constant. So in other words, you can't create or destroy energy. So we'll look at this uh, later on in terms of some reactions where the energy between the reactants and products might be different. But that difference in energy is accounted for with either heat giving off or heat being absorbed. So heat is another um, kind of way to look at and think about energy. So the energy can also be looked at in terms of heat, and we'll look at that later on in this chapter as well. So whenever we look at energy, um, there are two different kind of units and ways to measure it. One is going to be the calorie. So a calorie is defined as the amount of energy you need to raise the temperature of a gram of water by a degree Celsius. So that's the definition of a calorie. And then a joule is another unit, and you can see this conversion right here between a calorie and a joule. So this is um, present on your formula sheet that you'll have, so you don't have to memorize this. But you should be able to use this in terms of converting from calories to joules and from joules to calories. Uh, a lot of times with energy, the numbers get really large. So we tend to use kilojoules and kilocalories frequently. Um, so again, just a reminder of your metric prefixes that we look back in chapter one and make sure you're able to apply those. So uh, a thousand joules is a kilojoule, a thousand calories is one kilocalorie. So just like... Um, the, these two equations here are pretty much the same. Um, so one thing I want to point out here, this can just be helpful in kind of general terms. If one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules, that means one kilocalorie is equal to 4.184 kilojoules. Basically what we've done here is we've added a kilo on both sides. So with any conversion like this, you can add the same metric prefix to both sides of the equation and it'll be the same. So in other words, not that we usually measure calories in a smaller amount, but we could also say one millicalorie is equal to 4.184 millijoules, right? So the idea is as long as you add the same metric prefix on both sides, you still have a, an equal statement there. So again, that can just be helpful in general moving forward. Okay, so let's just take a look at this and do an example um, in terms of a conversion here. So it says that a gram of gas releases 11.5 kilocalories of energy upon combustion. So how many kilojoules does this correspond to and also how many joules? So if we had 11.5 kilocalories and we want to know how many kilojoules of energy are released, our conversion, as we just talked about, is that for every um, one kilocalorie, we're going to have 4.184 joules. Whoops, sorry, kilojoules. All right, so one kilocalorie is 4.184 kilojoules. So... Now, remember that our units here cancel out. So our units are going to cancel out. So kilocalories cancels out with kilocalories. And that's going to get us to an answer that is 48.1 kilojoules. Again, we're going to use for significant figures, three significant figures is what we started with. 
our conversion factor. We don't worry about significant figures because this is a defined amount. Um, and then our, so our answer is going to also have three significant figures. Now the next question says how many joules? So this is going to do a metric conversion here. So if we know that this answer 48.1 kilojoules, we want to know how many joules that is. Right, we know that we have 1,000 joules and one kilojoule. Right, so again, remember that whatever unit you have up top needs to go on the bottom next to it. Those cancel out. And our final answer here is going to be 48,100 joules. So these two numbers here are the same. Right, the thing that's different is the units, joules versus kilojoules. A lot of times, if you hear the word calories, you probably think of food, right? Because we measure the amount of energy that's stored in food in calories. Um, interestingly, nutritional calories, so the calories that you see about you see in food, are actually a different than just the regular calories that we talk about scientifically. So nutritional calories. We're going to use this uppercase C to uh, denote them. And they're actually one, low, one nutritional calorie with a capital C is 1,000 lowercase calories. So in other words, one big calorie is also equal to one kilocalorie, right? So one food calorie is really a kilocalorie. Um, and you can imagine we... The reason we have this kind of conversion and talk about a nutritional calorie and its relation to a regular calorie, um, if you were to eat a, a serving of food that, let's say, is 200 calories, right, that's a lot different mentally than to say you just had 200,000 calories worth of food. So it's just kind of a mental thing, which is why they simplify and also to keep the numbers down, um, right, a typical diet is like, 2,000 calories or 2,500 calories. That's a lot different than saying you should eat 2 million or 2.5 million calories every day, which is what you're actually doing if you're looking at regular calories. Um, so whenever we look at our food, there's main biochemicals that are in there. And these are biochemicals we'll look at later on in the semester. But whenever you metabolize your food, you're going to metabolize and break down proteins carbohydrates, which are, which are sugars, and fats. So the fats are actually the ones that have the most energy stored, and we say that it has 9 calories per gram, or 9,000 calories per gram. Again, whenever we're talking about food, we'll use the capital C. So 9 calories per gram of fat, and 4 calories each for carbohydrates and protein, or sugars and protein. So let me just write that on here. Right? Sugars and carbohydrates are going to be the same thing. So what we can do um, based on this is you could take any piece of food you have. So if you have um, uh, something around that you can look at, uh, here I have kind of a label from Dark Chocolate Chunk Kind Bars. Um, and you can see I blocked out the number of calories. Because what we're going to do is calculate it based on the amount of fat, the amount of carbs, which are sugars, and then the amount of protein. So what we can do for every fat, we, it's 5 grams, but we know that there's going to be 9 calories per gram. So that means we're going to have 45 calories from the fat. Um, and again, I'm using the, lower, uh, the capital C's to represent food calories. For the total carbohydrates, it's going to be 23 grams, and that's going to be 4 calories per gram. Again, those grams cancel. That's going to be 92 calories. And then for the protein, 2 grams, not a whole lot of protein in, in the kind bars here. These are going to be 4 calories per gram. Again, those cancel, and that's going to be 8 calories. So if we were to add them all up, 45 plus 92 plus 8, that's going to give us 145 total calories. And usually um, these uh, food companies, they round to the nearest 5 or 10. 
So I'm guessing that whenever we look at this, it's either going to be 140, 145, or 150. A lot of times they'll kind of round up. Um, and in this case, you can see there it's actually 150. So you're going to be really close whenever you do that. So if you ever have a nutrition label that you can't quite read or you're not sure, um, look at your fats, look at your sugars, look at your protein, and you can do the math and figure out uh, the number of calories and whatever it is you're about to eat.